everyone, Dr. Luke Peterson here, physical therapist with the Knee Replacement Therapist. In this video, we're going to talk about robotic arm assisted knee replacement surgeries. What does this mean and what are the pros and cons of this type of knee replacement surgery? Hey everyone, so today we're talking about robot um, knee replacement surgery, or better defined as robotic arm assisted knee replacement surgery. Um, there, this was brought up in our Facebook group this last week, um, talking about really the terminology is something you have to be careful with because when you talk about a robotic knee replacement surgery, there isn't really any ro robotic knee replacement surgery. It's not a robot or a machine that is doing your entire knee replacement surgery. It's actually a machine and it's using a lot of computer technology, computer software, but at the same time, the surgeon and the surgeon's team is, are the ones who are controlling everything that is going on and the ones who are in the driver's seat, so to speak. So kind of talking about the process of having a robotic arm assisted knee replacement surgery. So basically, prior to your surgery, um, preoperatively, you're going to have a CT scan, and a CT scan or a CAT scan is basically multiple x-rays performed all around your knee joint. And that's going to create a 3D model, a 3D computer model of your knee and the knee joint. And they're going to use this model to basically create a plan or parameters for when it comes to your knee replacement where exactly to make the bony cuts to the bone to resurface the area of your knee joint and also the shape and the size and the fit of your knee replacement components. The one thing that they it doesn't control for or that you have to figure out or the surgeon has to figure out is the soft tissue um, cuts and the soft tissue structure. So talking about the incision um, and then looking at the ligaments on the sides of the knee, making sure there's um, good balance of the ligaments. That's something that's going to be done actually within the surgery with some assistance from the computer technology, but it's really controlled by and um, determined by the surgeon. So what happens then when you have your knee replacement surgery is your surgeon is going to set up these tiny things called arrays. Um, they're basically like very tiny little satellites or little um, imaging devices. So they kind of put three or four of these little array type things around your knee joint. And what that does is it gives the computer software an image of your physical knee joint. And then at that point, there's some adjustments made um, so that the physical image and the physical positions and anatomy of your knee joint are matched up with what's on the computer models that were created from the CT scans you had before surgery. And then with that, what they do is basically a map is created of where the surgeon is to make the cuts to the bony anatomy. So basically it shows up on the computer screen right in front of the surgeon and everyone who's involved with the surgery. Um, there's these different colored areas that show exactly where to make the cuts. And then, of course, this information is also connected with the robotic arm, the um, infamous robotic arm that's going to be used by the surgeon to actually make those cuts. So what happens is now that they have this image of where to make the cuts for the surgery, the bony cuts, the surgeon then is controlling this robotic arm and the robotic arm at the end has the tool that the equipment that is going to actually make those cuts, the um, sharp cutting tool, knife, or whatever you want to call it, that's going to make those actual cuts, and then he's controlling it with a handle, and then there's this big arm attached. You can uh, Google it or YouTube it to see a better visual. And so basically, the surgeon is controlling the device the whole time, making the cuts, following along with what's going up on the computer screen, following where the areas are to make the specific cuts. So the surgeon is in control the whole time. However, the thing is, the robotic arm 
will not let the surgeon deviate out of an area that shouldn't be cut. So if the surgeon starts to deviate, starts to move the robotic arm too much um, outside of the area that's supposed to be cut, the machine will stop him and it won't let him make those cuts. So in theory, the bony cuts that are made from one surgeon and if another surgeon made those same cuts based on that same um, computer image, the cuts should be exactly the same. Um, so it's kind of like I compared it to, um, you know, sort of like the autonomous driving of a Tesla car. Um, the person still has to be driving the car and still have control over the car, even though it does have all this very good and very um, technological advancements and things to help the driver very uh, drive very well, the person is still driving the car. Same with the surgery, all of this computer technology, computer software really helps the surgeon make um, very precise, accurate cuts and surgical technique, but at the same time, they are still have to be controlling the machine and making the cuts themselves by controlling the machine with their hand. So, something to keep in mind. Now, the surgeon can, of course, make some adjustments. The idea is obviously these adjustments are going to be very minor because the computer software and everything in the planning has already created this specific plan and parameters that are going to be very precise and accurate, but they can make some minor adjustments as they see appropriate and fit. Now, what are some things to keep in mind? So some of the early research and the early evidence does support that this surgical technique may be better than traditional surgeries. Um, so they say, of course, there's going to be a higher level of accuracy, precision, um, better anatomical fit and um, biomechanics of the knee replacement, more of a natural fit. Um, some early results show that there seems to be less need for revision surgeries, less complications, um, and just earlier return of function. Something to keep in mind with this is the people who are getting robotic assisted surgeries, um, because this is a new technology, they tend to do the surgery on people who are younger, people who are a little higher functioning, uh, people who have less risk of complications or less comorbidities because they want to make sure that this is an effective surgical tool. So they're actually performing these a lot on healthier individuals so it might make sense that these individuals are going to have better outcomes than people who might have some more risks or might be a little older in age. So just something to keep in mind, um, take it with a grain of salt a little bit. Some things to keep in mind as well is the robotic arm assisted surgery is very expensive. Um, it's upwards, you know, in the millions of dollars for the um, system, for the hospital system or the surgical company, whatever it may be, to purchase this device. And there's also, of course, thousands and thousands of dollars that are spent on upkeep and uh, annual operating costs of the machine. And so a lot of times you're going to want to keep in mind that you may have to pay more money for the knee replacement surgery or the um, healthcare system, the hospital system might have to pay for money for a robotic assisted surgery compared to your traditional knee replacement surgery. Um, however, it seems to be that there are some better outcomes involved, at least in the short term. What I want to have you keep in mind is in the long term, there hasn't been really any evidence yet to show any difference between a traditional surgery and the robotic arm assisted surgery. Now, part of that is they haven't, um, it hasn't been a lot around really long enough to do a lot of research on comparison, comparing people and long-term outcomes. Another thing to think about is when you have a knee replacement surgery, the biomechanics and the accuracy and the precision of the anatomical fit and the physiology of the knee replacement is really just one component of your knee replacement surgery. A traditional knee replacement surgery, yes, it might not be as accurate as a computer-based CT scan model, but it can be very precise, very accurate, very well done surgery, of course, as it's been done for many years now. Um, you know, think about driving a car. 
uh, autonomous driving car using multiple cameras and computer technology is going to drive very accurately with very good precision, theoretically. But at the same time, human beings have been driving for how many years? And we can drive effectively and we can look out for obstacles. So yes, there's going to be more precision, more accuracy, but the extent of that accuracy and that precision in terms of how that translates to improved outcomes is still kind of up for debate. And the thing you want to think about is there's so many factors that play a role in what type of outcome you have after knee replacement surgery, if you're satisfied with your outcome. Um, there's things like, did you participate in pre-op physical therapy? Did you, um, what, are your, what were your expectations with knee replacement surgery? Are you younger or a little bit older? Do you have comorbidities or other risk factors that may lead to complications? Um, how did you manage your knee replacement after surgery? Did you go to physical therapy? Did you stick up, stay up with your exercises? Did you participate in things that might be risky and lead to breakdown of the knee replacement? Um, are you at a healthy weight, body weight? Um, do you have any other um, psychological, mental aspects, you know, depression, anxiety, um, fear avoidance or pain catastrophizing? Um, do you have good social support system that helped you through the knee replacement process both before and after? All of these different things and many more that I probably can't think of right now are playing a role in what outcome you have after knee replacement surgery. So I'm not going to be surprised if, if we improve the precision of the surgery anatomically by a couple percentages that if it's going to lead to tremendously different outcomes overall because the precision of the actual surgery, although very important, is still just one piece of the puzzle of having a good outcome from knee replacement surgery. But I will say at the end of the day, if I had a family member or someone said you could have a knee replacement surgery the traditional way, or you can have a robotic arm assisted surgery, um, and the costs were comparable, I would recommend them having the robotic assisted arm surgery. So that's kind of my overall thoughts. I think the outcomes are going to be very similar, yet it still is important. You know, if we can have this accuracy and precision, then we should take advantage of it. And hopefully as technology improves and as this grows in the market, it will become more and more affordable for the hospital systems to use it and um, will become more commonplace overall. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. As always, I ask you to please subscribe if you like my videos. I post every day about knee replacement related things. I, of course, would like you to also check us out online at kneereplacementtherapist.com. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and take care.